what's going on guys welcome back to another video today we have a very long overdue video on um, this is going to be my review of my battle of crate mock inspired for battlefront 2 guys i'm not going to preface this too much however i will talk a considerable amount in the end however i do hope that i'll answer all your questions and as usual guys if i do miss anything please let me know down in the comments below and i'll try and get back to you as soon as i can but without further ado let's go ahead and jump right into today's review all right guys so let's go ahead and get started on this end here we obviously have the two atm6 walkers designed by mihal kozlowski if you guys want to go ahead and check out his stuff i'll leave some links in the description for you guys to contact him and pick up the parts list and instructions and all that kind of stuff um but really a big fan of how these walkers turned out i think that the scale of the walker to the minifigure right there as you guys can see works out almost perfectly with um the base wall on the mountain i think the scale is is honestly the best part of this entire mock and it was a really big thing that i was kind of worrying about was the scale i didn't i didn't want a walker that was going to be all the way up here but I didn't want the Lego set that was only going to be here. So this was definitely um, the best option to go with. I won't talk any more about this walker. If you guys want to go ahead and check out my full review, I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to check out. But then moving on to either sides of the walkers, we're going to have the idea of the natural trenches. These are like kind of naturally occurring caves or caverns, if you will. Um, basically just a whole bunch of slopes, essentially kind of making the wall of like a mini mountain and then kind of outlining the top with some wedge plates and stuff like that to make the really natural curve this is an aspect that is true to the battlefront map and this is something that i definitely wanted to include i think it came out really really cool again the idea was that these were not man-made more so that they were all naturally occurring that's why you can kind of see the more natural curves and edges and stuff like that and then moving forward guys we do have the majority of i want to say all of the first order minifigs as you guys can see um the idea with these footprints right here is that some of them have been already spawned and they kind of just ran to the battlefield but then somewhere you won't see the footprints such as the guys back there um the idea is they would have just spawned that's why there's no footprints so i know a lot of you guys were wondering why not everybody has footprints and that's the kind of idea that i went through and then there's kind of a tour throughout the top of the map all the way to the bottom we have bosk and darth maul the two most notable figures over there with some first order snowtroopers or regular stormtroopers uh, we do have a flame trooper over there and then we have a battle going on in that main trench moving down here we're going to have a plethora of officers um first order snowtroopers some more heroes such as Hux, uh, Darth Vader, Phasma, and then a few other special unique guys like a sharpshooter in that foxhole right there. And then a flame trooper as well as a medic, which I kind of completely made up, which really isn't even a thing. And then this little trench right here, guys, is going to be that first man-made trench that I was kind of talking about. Now, the idea was that the resistance had more than one layer of defense. And then back here is going to be the last and final resort, but we'll get into that in a second. But the idea with this is that the trenches would be smaller than the main trench and that they would pose as a sort of first line of defense but as you guys can see here uh the first order pretty much overran that very very quickly we have some dead first order troopers as well as some resistance officers and troopers right here and then the same can be said for down there the same very very same layout i didn't want to spend too many minifigures in this area because i knew that this wasn't going to be an area of focus but i think it just added a really cool aesthetic to the mock having the resistance have more than one layer of defense which is pretty cool and then moving on towards the middle guys we do have the crashed ski speeder which is a concept that i really really fell in love with ever since um we actually got this certain design so i did use the ski speeder set um from lego officially and then i did kind of break it up and put it in chunks and that's kind of how it turned out the idea was that it was skiing uh down here it was eventually shot by that tie fighter right about there and then it kind of blew up and crashed and all that red is just the dirt that picked up from it kind of indenting in the ground. So I really like this way this came out. Huge shout out to my Uncle Pat who actually um, did a lot of the detailing here which looks awesome. And then below that TIE Fighter we do have another blown up chunk of land which again just kind of adds that really cool aesthetic to the map. As well as some few troopers and Han Solo over there kind of rushing into the battlefield kind of helping out his buds. Here we have the resistance uh, pilot running away. Um, now this is supposed to be Poe Dameron. And moving down guys, we do have Luke Skywalker. Again, one of the main heroes for the Battlefront 2 game mode. And then we, here we just have another kind of foxhole. I really like the way this came out. I think the wedges really make it look indented in the ground. So that came out amazing. And then we just have a resistance uh, sharpshooter as well as another resistance officer there. Moving down here guys, we're going to have the underground trench. Now this is the concept that... Um, basically there would be a door from that trench, which led to here, and this was like an area that the spectator can see underground. Now, now ideally, this whole top would be covered, so the, the, the figures on top would not be able to see this. But I felt that, um, from a spectating point of view, I definitely wanted to include these. In Battlefront 2, they're actually a pretty extensive tunnel system, so I definitely wanted to include that. Unfortunately, with the size of the mock, I really couldn't include that immersive trench system, so I wanted to pay a little homage to that. 
And again, this is the ideal view of a spectator. You can just kind of see the action kind of going on underground. We have Kylo Ren and Rey kind of duking it out with some other officers. And then moving on to the left here, guys, we're going to have the main trench here. We do have a uh, photographer for the resistance or rebellion propaganda, as well as a whole bunch of troopers kind of just peering over the side and getting ready to actually take on that first order. Moving up here, guys, we do have the turret, which was initially designed by a good friend, Bailey. And then I did um, some pretty big modifications to it including the back as well as the pipes, which kind of go in and out. So I'm super happy about that. And then give you guys another look at this trench. The ground is made up of plates and then a whole bunch of the 1x4 modified plates as well as the grills. And then the back is actually made up of a whole bunch of 1x4 bricks with the studs on the side. So then I could put those slopes on the side. And I think that really came out nice. Moving on to the other side. Again, very similar design here. We're going to have one of the doors and then just a whole bunch of resistance soldiers just kind of waiting and ready for the massive first order assault. And then the backing of the main part of the trench is made up of pipes, which I really wanted to include because pipes are actually a pretty big part of the trench. So I think that came out really, really cool. And then get, again, giving you guys some better angles of what the trench looks like. So it definitely fits a lot of troopers. And then we move up a little bit and we do have that second resistance turret. Again, same design, um, some modifications as well as some troopers inside it. So I really like the way that this main trench came out. The main trench is definitely one of the most uh, iconic things of Crate, so I'm very, very happy with this final product. Moving on to the back, guys, we're going to have a few more troopers who are going to be actually moving out of the base here. We do have some pretty notable names, including Finn and Lando, kind of spawning from the base, running out to the trench to kind of help out their buddies. There is no interior, guys. In fact, that thing should not be there, but that's all right. But this was just the interior ground that I kind of came up with. I didn't want to spend too much time on it because I, I knew from when I started building it that I wouldn't do an interior just because of the budget. Then moving on to the mountains, guys. Here we have both mountains and base wall. I will give you guys a better view of it once we turn around the corner. But basically the mountain, uh, it basically this accents of red and white and gray really, really heavily on the bottom. And then ideally I would have liked to continue the white and gray throughout the top of the mountain, but I actually ran out of parts. Um, so that, unfortunately that was not possible. And then the side is just covered up by some bricks to give you guys a really cool kind of aesthetic with that mountain. And the same thing can be said over there. We got the accents of red, light gray. Um, but then unfortunately, I ran out of other colors besides dark gray. So I couldn't do um, as much coloration. And then the base itself is made up of slopes. I believe that is two by two by three slanted slopes. The uh, I, guess, I believe they're dark tan. And then some bricks on top to give it that really cool, I guess, look, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And then I'll show you guys the back and what it looks like here. So this is the design, the Technic design for the crate wall. Basically every layer is made up of some Technic bricks which are interlocked so it's definitely not gonna fall over. And then just some more Technic interlocking just to make sure it's as sturdy as possible. We got some Robin action going there. A little cool Easter egg. And then on the sides here, the mountain is just very simple with the filler. I'm definitely gonna have to reinforce this a little bit for uh, moving it to Chicago and Virginia. But this is the uh, technic and kind of inner workings of the wall. All right, guys, so that's going to kind of wrap up this review of Crate. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Now, I guess the big thing that you guys have all been wondering is how much did this mock cost? Now, one thing, I'm not going to say how much I specifically spent on it. But, however, I will go through a list of how much e each thing is worth. So, that being said, guys, the numbers I'm about to say does not necessarily equal how much I actually spent. I will not be telling you guys how much money I spent out of pocket. However, I will tell you the mock's worth. So, starting with the two walkers easily 350 for each one so that's 600 700 so 700 dollars alone for the um for the walkers go with the support bricks so every 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 filler i think i bought about eight cups of filler from pick a brick so you can do that math eight times let's do eight times 10 80 8, 6, 48 so about so definitely a lot of money in pick a brick for the filler the standard cost for all the salt parts for each order i made three orders total and each order for all assault would have cost without the discount $400. So you can kind of do that math. The minifigures, I really have no idea. Um, I'm going to say roughly there are about two dozen first orders. I'm going to say there's almost close to three dozen first order troopers and maybe two dozen resistance. So let's just do a standard $3 a figure, which even isn't true for the flame troopers and for the special guys. So so let's say let's say 50 minifigures total roughly. So about $150 in minifigures. And then we obviously have the first order TIE Fighter, which is a $60 or $70 set. The Ski Speeder, which is about a $70 set. 
The resistance turrets themselves would have costed about $90. Um, the two orders that I put in for the rocks for the mountain was about with, again, pre-discount. So this is not what I paid for. Um, but if you were to buy that off pick a brick right now, I believe it would have cost about $300 for the entire mountain. Um, the base wall was actually probably not as expensive. It was actually $150 total. And then all the trench parts, I would have to say, is probably anywhere from $100 to $200. I'm not exactly sure. Um, so I'll put a number on the screen right now just to kind of reaffirm how much this thing is worth. But yeah. So again, that's not how much I specifically bought it for or like how much I actually paid for. But if I were to sell it, I'd probably sell it for at least that number. Um, so guys, that's going to wrap this up and let's go ahead and outro the video. All right, guys. So that obviously wraps up the video. I hope you all enjoyed. And it's kind of crazy to think that Crate is now done. However, I am super, super excited to be starting off the new project. Stay tuned for a video coming very soon about the next mod. However, before we go ahead and outro the video, I do want to give a huge thank you to a few people. So the first two people I do want to give shouts to are Moose Animations and Charlie Edwards sports and more um, they actually donated minifigs and filler brick to the mock itself so huge thank you to those guys and now I'm gonna read off a list of all the super chats that I've gotten ever since I started create now guys I'm gonna read it in order from the highest donation to the lowest donation I'm not gonna read the exact amount given but the top three donations are gonna be from rich boy J Kenneth and Garrett from Garrett bricks Top of you guys, thank you so much. And then starting with the fourth highest donation, we have Bricks to You, JP Lego Studios Mobile, Star Wars Trumpet, Ginger Bricks, um, the Jackpot Gold YouTube, Charlie Edwards again, and as well as Bailey's Bricks. So guys, thank you all so much for those of you who did donate via Super Chat on my streams. You have no idea how much all that money kind of helped me out in terms of making the mock and kind of making more progress even quicker than usual. Um, so I do want to seriously thank you for all, all your support in terms of the Super Chats. And last but not least, before we wrap up the Crate series, I do want to thank each and every single one of you guys, the viewers who are watching right now. Um, it has been such an amazing experience to build with an, an audience that actually looks forward to my videos. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard this before in many other of my videos, but I still have not yet grasped that idea that people look forward to my videos. And like I said before, I will never kind of understand that. It's just something that I can't explain. And I do seriously, seriously love it. And it, it really has grown into a passion of mine. And I hope that you guys all enjoyed the ride in terms of building Crate. Like I said before, you guys are definitely not going to want to miss the next mock I'm making. Stay tuned for a video coming out later this week about what mock I should make. And then the following week, I will officially um, decide what mock I will be doing. So guys, if you're brand new to the channel, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. Make sure you guys all have your bell icon click That way you know as soon as I post every Everybody, make sure you smash the heck out of that like button on this video. You guys already know the drill, how it helps me out a ton. And I'll see you guys in the next mock video. Peace.